my elders, I had said it before, they were Kashmiri Brahmins. <coughs> my grandfather, though a past Muslim, he still thought he was a Brahmin. He had a cheek to say that. <laughs> my father and my uncles, they didn't care about these things. They were just Muslim like everybody else. I was myself very anti Hindu. In 1947, I played hell with the non Muslims. Then one night when I slept, I was Muslim. When I woke up next morning, I was a Hindu. I don't know what it is. I was upset. I wanted to know the reason. Eventually, I, the special word I forget at the moment which show that you carry the genes of not only your parents, but you carry ancestral genes as well. And occasionally they wake up, they rise up, and you begin to copy your ancestors. I think okay. this is what happened. <clears throat> I have no other explanation. Then I read the Vedas and I knew, no, I, I am on the right line. It took me 20 years to write the book Vedic Civilization. Without determination, it wouldn't have been possible. My business was doing very, very well some 20 years ago or 25 years ago. I just packed it in. I wanted to do the work which I am doing, and I am glad I am. I have no money, but I still live like a lot, and that is good enough for me. I want to, don't want to hold money. I, I have done my best for my children, they should look after themselves. Nobody... Would you like, at the end of your journey, to be cremated or buried? Cremated? Ha! I got my wife, but she's a Christian. She didn't like the idea of my being cremated. Mm -hmm. I have begged her to please I have cremated. I have my daughter in London, I have begged her to make sure that her mother, that is my wife, cremates me. <laughs> That answer your question? Yes. <laughs> All my ancestors were cremated. Oh, what, what is, there was a custom in all advanced countries mm -hmm. that those big people, they were cremated, but the poor people were buried. buried. So it's a good way of becoming a big man, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> if you have to speak the truth, there is only one way, you can't mince it. Oh, yeah. You can't mince it, yes. You can't. You, you can't. Two and two makes four. You can't say how it is quarter to four quarter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and three are the five. You have to stand up and stay, state the truth. They know the way. It always carries some risk. If you can't take the risk down one. Willing to think good of India, include them. Yes. But those who are not, give them ultimatum. Move to Pakistan, <laughs> yeah, go back to Arabia. <laughs> <laughs> no, you are here, you are respecting this house. Yes. Now, if you don't, well, I can't be hospitable. If India is not their country, why are they there? That's true. Generation after generation. <clears throat> Hindus have taken no action against it. Uh, when you say that Islam doesn't make sense or you cannot realize God through Islam, you can't. why is that there's such a big following? Why is it such a big religion? Why there are so many fools in the world? Why is that Islam is so fundamentalist? Why? For what reason is it? It is. Islam is the collection of certain principles. Unless you follow them, you have no right to call yourself a Muslim. It is sticking to those principles which makes you fundamentalist. But these people have 
eased everything for themselves that if you do what the Prophet did, you are a Muslim, otherwise you are not. Now the Prophet waged so many jihad, jihad means fighting with soul, not the way the Muslim pretend that it means the, the higher the, jihad. <laughs> yeah, that is the only jihad. The rest is just a definition they are made. Now sustenance means this. No, you can't call breathing a sustenance, though it may be called, but is it, that is not real sustenance, is it? Mm -hmm. And since these people are so frustrated now, they can't make headway anyway, so they are become more and more fundamentalists. The fact that they blow themselves off, no sane person can do that. You got to be completely upset to do this thing. You got only one life, this is why you are inclined to defend yourself. The person who is going to blow himself off is not a normal person, is he? Mm -hmm. But this is the result of fundamentalism. But do you think Islam creates this abnormal, abnormality in a person's mind? Yes, it does. For example, Islam teaches hatred of non-Muslims. Mm -hmm. Now, if I begin to believe you are not human, I am not going to love you. I am not going to think of you as my equal. Now, this is the basic philosophy of Islam, that everybody who is not a Muslim is not human. <clears throat> he should be subdued. He must be made to make it taxpayer, a humble, obedient servant. Now with this philosophy, you can't do anything but to hurt those who do not practice what you practice. And all these things I have stated in my book called Islam and Terrorism. But uh, would you not, uh, sorry, would you not support a peace-loving Muslim and if he offers five days namaz, so oh, no. do you think that is, wrong that is just a ritual, that is a personal ritual. Okay. It is the same thing. If you are a drinker, if you get whiskey, you feel better. If you don't get whiskey, you feel restless. That is just a ritual. Mm -hmm. Now when I was a Muslim, unless I prayed five times, I did it, I couldn't sleep at night. Okay. But when I had a change of opinion, then it was a different thing altogether. Do you think Muslims worship the same God as Hindus and other people do? No. Because, because I think they worship an Asura actually. Because Islam does not believe there is any other God except Allah. Now if you want me to explain what Allah is, if I explain it now, there will be riots. So, in a roundabout way, again, Muslim do not, they believe, sincerely believe that God is one. But in actual effect, God is not one. You want to know, because this is a very important statement. What they call kalma, which means yeah, yeah, yeah. there is no God but Allah. Yeah. But the tragedy is, if you believe in Allah, you don't become a Muslim. Hindus believe in Allah or God. Christians believe in God. So many other people in God, Muhammad. but they, they still don't qualify as Muslim. To believe in Muhammad. Muhammad. Now, which one is more important, Muhammad or Allah? Unless you believe in Muhammad, you cannot become Muslim. And if you are not a Muslim, you go to hell. So if Allah cannot save you from going to hell, what kind of Allah is he? Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> he said, you do four wives, I can do thirteen, <laughs> or as many as I can get. <laughs> but what kind of law is this? But one of his wives uh, was eight years old? Aisha. Aisha. Is it? That's a controversy. They said she is 16 no, years old. No, 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 there is no controversy. The Hadith clearly says 
that she was six years old. Six years old. Yeah. When he married her. And they also say, claim that you have to ask the consent of the woman whom you want to marry. What does a six year old woman know about marriage? But they claim it, she, she was 16. They tell lies, they are mad. <laughs> oh. They, but they even don't know how to tell lies. <laughs> <laughs> I shall know about these things to say yes, I know about her marriage. No, he married her when she was six. So obviously a woman has no say in the marriage, in, 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 in uh, the matters of marriage. No, these people are made of stories which they cannot back up. No, if you analyze <laughs> Islam, Avan wonders. How is it that Islam overran so many civilizations within 50 to 100 years of its creation? Iran was gone. That is a good side. question. That is a very good question. Tell me now, how is it that Genghis Khan in 50 years he murdered half the humanity? But he didn't manage to destroy the cultures. Islam overran civilizations uh -huh. as such. Because it was not his business. He wanted to rule people. Whereas Islam wanted to destroy culture to establish its own culture. This is the real difference. Islam itself is the ambassador of a certain way of living, which is mean, a different culture. Allah you do destroy the existing culture, you cannot impose a new culture. Mm -hmm. It is the same thing. If your car is green and you want to make it black, you have to go over the black to give it new color. You can't allow the black color to show it's itself. From the Muslims in India, to the Hindus or to the entire nation? Is there a potential threat of the Muslims? Now you can be sure, I am glad you were not born at that time. <laughs> when I was born, you are going to have an other revolution the way we had in 1947. Okay. The truth is no matter what the Muslims say. In chapter 2 of the Quran, God says, Allah is the enemy of non-Muslims. And he wants their destruction. So his followers are going to destroy all non-Muslims. Their population is growing fast. And before long they will want to... No, they can't live with any non-Muslim. They drove out all non-Muslims from the Punjab. Kashmir. Even they have driven out all the non-Muslims uh, non from Kashmir. Never mind anything else. So they are going to make another claim that we want this part of India, uh, Pakistan or something <coughs> else on, and there will be the civil wars again. It is not only India, in fact the whole world faces this danger because there is no such thing as democracy in uh, Islam. Islam. <coughs> Islam advocates government of God, whereas democracy is the government of the people. What will happen is, when the population of the Muslims of India increases, they will rule India by force of the revolt. But I am sure the Hindus are going to resist. So that democracy will go out of the window. That will be mighty right. And if Hindus can muster some power, they will survive. Otherwise, they will become slaves of the Muslims forever. But they will, Hindus will have to muster power, not in just, just physical sense only, but in a, in a oh, no, no, political I sense. That is what, whatever is God power, they will have to that. Physical power has got its own significance, <coughs> but these days, Intellectual power, power of the brain, power of discipline are far more important than the physical power. You can say, carry one mound of rice on your shoulder, but if you have a crane, you can carry 20 mound, one person. So, power means so many things. No, it is no good. To start with, it is no good for the Hindus to fight Muslims, they should all be Indians. But as it is the 
tradition of the Muslim that they can't live with non-Muslim. If they live, they have to live, they have to impose their rule. So that will lead to similar trouble what people had in 1947. Usually what they say is that, no, no, Islam is good, Muslims have distorted it. <laughs> Why they Muslim? No, look. This is pauperdom, say bread. If it looks like banana, no matter what it is, it is banana, isn't it? If they are distorted Islam, it is no longer Islam, but they have practiced. So you don't need it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Now where is the true Islam? Show me. The tragedy of Islam is all those nations which are Muslim, they all are backward. They are disunited, they are backward. You see the, all these bombers, the self Suicide bombers. Bombers, they, 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 all, they all are Muslim. <laughs> Hindus don't have terrorists. <laughs> no, they should have some of them. <laughs> No, that is true, because we live in a, an age of violence. What do you have to say about the secular people in India? There's a big, big intellectual class which poses to be secular. Now where? In India. They are the secular Hindus. as long as that suits them. You bring Islam in and they will lose all the secularism. The Muslim can be very highly intelligent people. When it comes to religion, they just become a flop. They can't argue because they have been brainwashed right from the beginning. Now I could give you many examples, but I think it would be better. I don't say much about it. They are totally brainwashed people. And this brainwashing started right from the beginning. The Prophet Muhammad was a great psychologist. And I say this with a lot of respect <laughs> and not to blacken his character. No, I saw a program on the television, British television, long time ago. Mm -hmm. They are geese, you know, they, they say, you know what geese is? These birds, uh -huh. birds yeah, look geese. like ducks mm -hmm. yeah. and they fly as well. Mm -hmm. A man made every event, they, they flew after him. And he said, this is what is called imprinting. Well, when these birds, the first person they see as they come out of their eggs, they think that person for their father or mother. So whatever the father or mother that my person goes, they follow him. The, you know, the Prophet Muhammad knew this principle. This is the reason once a Muslim baby is born, they cry uh, azan in his or her ear. They say it loud. Allah is one and Muhammad is prophet. So this is the first influence hmm. to brainwash the Muslim babies. And then you have to circumcise and yet these people pretend that every baby is born a Muslim. I think it is the other way around. Hmm. If he is born a Muslim, why do you have to circumcise him? <laughs> The fact that they circumcise him, it shows that babies are not born as Muslims, they are born as humans. <coughs> and afterwards they are... Uh, they, they, that is cruel. <coughs> no, but they won't stop it. Because this is a part of this, their brainwashing. Barbaric. Highly. This issue of uh, religious demography, coming back to it, there are some Muslim countries which have implemented uh, family planning and other... But that is against Islam. Turkey, for example. They are because Iran, they are Iran, secularized. Even Iran does it. Because it is necessary, they can't raise other countries to settle their people there anymore. So they have realized, they can always misinterpret to say, well, that this is birth control is a part of Islam. They can prove anything from Islam. It has nothing to do with Islam. This is an anti-Islamic. It shows that uh, Islam is not holding good. It is not holding on its own. But why is it that Indian Muslims keep resisting this? Even though they, it is... Because there is nobody to check them. 
they know we can do to the Hindus whatever they like. They told you to check the No, if they no, if there was an open door, any thief can come in. But if there was a doorman there, hey, you can't come in, they will think twice. And with democracy in India, the Hindu leaders want their vote and they pamper them. They are going to destroy democracy in India. Not democracy as I have argued in my book, The Vedic Civilization. This is, was not born in Greece. It was born in India, and I have quoted extensively from the Vedas. No, this is the Indian way of life, democracy. This is why they have taken to it so kindly. All Hindus want to be Democrats, don't they? Yeah. And now they are abusing their way of life. To them, a woman is just a matter of pleasure. A man can divorce his woman just by saying thrice, talaq, thrice, divorce, I divorce thee, I divorce thee, I divorce thee, and that is the end of the matter. Yeah. They tell a patch of lies. That order that regarded four wives is still in the Quran. It is legitimate. There are so many Hindus. They apparently become Muslims so that they can have more than one wife. <laughs> 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 I, am, I am not misleading them, <laughs> they already know that. No, what they say in India is that uh, the issue of demography is, I mean, the, the way propaganda is done, the yeah. secular media, the way they prop propagandize is that uh, the issue of uh, population is not bound to religion. It is just that these people are poor it, and it therefore is. they are greedy. <laughs> <laughs> it is because the, the, the new brethren, they don't have the guts to come to grip with them and they make excuses. These new brethren, they don't have the guts to come to grip with them and they make excuses. I was myself very anti-Hindu. In 1947 I played hell with the non-Muslims. Then one night when I slept, I was Muslim, when I woke up next morning, I was a Hindu. I don't know what it is. I was upset. I wanted to know the reason. Eventually, I, the special word I forget at the moment, which shows that you carry the genes of not only your parents, but you carry ancestral genes as well. And occasionally they wake up, they rise up, and you begin to copy your ancestors. I think okay. this is what happened. <clears throat> I have no other explanation. Makes four. You can't say how oh, the quarter to four quarter. <laughs> and three are the five. You have to stand up and stay, state the truth. They know the way. It always carries some risk. If you can't take the risk down, I am willing to think good of India, include them, but yes. those who are not, give them ultimatum, move to Pakistan, <laughs> yeah, go back to Arabia. <laughs> yeah. No, you are here, you are respecting this house. Yes. Now, if you don't, well, I can't be hospitable. If India is not their country, why are they there? Then I read the Vedas and I knew, no, I, was, I am on the right line. It took me 20 years to write the book Vedic Civilization. Without determination, it wouldn't have been possible. My business was doing very, very well some 20 years ago or 25 years ago. I just packed it in. I wanted to do the work which I am doing. And I am glad I am. I have no money, but I still live like a lot, and that is good enough for me. I want to, don't want to hold money. I, I have done my best for my children. They should look after themselves. Nobody. Would you like, at the end of your journey, to be cremated or buried? Cremated. Ha! I got my wife, but she is a Christian. 
She didn't like the idea about being cremated. Mm -hmm. I have begged that to be cremated. I have my daughter in London. I have begged her to make sure that her mother that is my wife cremates me. <laughs> mm -hmm. That answer your question? Yes. <laughs> All my ancestors were cremated. Oh, what, what is, <laughs> there was a custom in all advanced countries mm -hmm. that those big people they were cremated but the poor people were buried. buried. So it's a good way of becoming a big man, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> that if you have to speak the truth, there is only one way, you can't mince it. Yeah. You can't mince it, yes. You can't. You, you can't. Two and two My elders, I stated before, they were Kashmiri Brahmins. <coughs> My grandfather, though a pious Muslim, he still thought he was a Brahmin. He had the cheek to say that. <laughs> My father and my uncles, they didn't care about these things. They were just Muslim like everybody else. 